Um, I received a question this, uh, this afternoon about how to find the sample standard deviation. So I figured I'd go ahead and do a video just to show everyone as you're working on the discussion this week and the homework, but more time sensitive is the discussion, how to find the sample standard deviation. You can do it manually. Now here from my lesson in the announcement yesterday morning, this is one of the um, boxes you'll see on there on the formula. You'll also see this in the e-text about how to find the standard deviation manually. Okay, so first of all, S denotes sample standard deviation. Sigma, that other little Greek symbol, that's for the population standard deviation. But in this case, we're looking at the sample. So here we have X1 minus X bar. Remember, X bar is your sample mean. So that's when you find the mean for your sample. You're going to take each of your data values one at a time, subtract the mean from that sample, square it, and then add it to the same thing for the second sample, and so on and so forth until you've done all the samples. So basically you're looking at the, the distance from each data value to that mean, squaring it. And on the bottom here you have n minus 1. Remember n is your sample size. So this week I think for the discussion you have 25 data values. So n would be 25 in that case. And then once you do everything under this radical, you're going to take the square root of that whole thing. You can do that manually. It is very time consuming. If you do it, I do recommend doing it in Excel where you could take that data and find those subtractions. But there are functions available in both Excel and StatCrunch that can do this for you. So I encourage you to get familiar with the formula so you understand what's going into the calculation. And if you want to manually calculate it once, that's fine. But I will tell you, it's going to be very time consuming if you don't learn how to do this in either StatCrunch or Excel. Excel is a great tool. It's very robust. It offers a lot of options. However, it is not as easy to learn as StatCrunch. So if you're unfamiliar with Excel or you're having a harder time with the material, I highly recommend using StatCrunch. It's a very easy tool to pick up. It will save you time and it will allow you to focus on understanding and learning the content and the material for the topics we're covering as opposed to being kind of lost in the, in the software. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to Excel. You notice I hid all the columns besides the ones that we're looking at for this discussion. So again, this is looking at the module one discussion. I'm going to go ahead and select just the first 25 um, rows or data uh, cells here. As you can see here, count 25. That tells me I've got 25. I'm going to copy and paste that. So I'm going to show you guys how to go over to StatCrunch, how to find StatCrunch, and how to get into there when you're not in the homework assignments, okay? When you're in the homework assignments, there will be a link next to the data set, or you can use the question help menu to access StatCrunch. That's the easiest way. When you're in the discussions, you want to open StatCrunch. This is the easiest way. All right, you go to Learning Modules, click on My Stat Lab. Go all the way down to Stat Crunch, and I know this is kind of a weird way. Just stick with me. Oops, let's do this. Open the same window. So once you've clicked on my Stat, or excuse me, um, Stat Crunch, it'll bring up this thing. Don't purchase. Don't do anything. Click on data sets from your textbook. I know, it's weird. And then just collect any chapter, any example and it will open StatCrunch. Let me close these other windows. And what you're going to do is just select it all and delete it. Now you've got StatCrunch open and available. Now I'm, I already copied those 25 um, observations for TPC, TPCP from the weather data. I'm going to copy it in here. Now if you go to Stat, Summary Stats, Column, you select that variable, that's your TCPC, and you can just select all the things that you want to find. I think we need to find mean, standard deviation, and median. Click Compute, and that's it. It found it for you. There's your sample standard deviation, your mean, and your median. Again, you can find this information in my lesson from the Monday morning announcement. Welcome to week one. You can also see a lot of this in the webinars. So if you're struggling and are having a hard time understanding something, I highly recommend going to both of those places if you're not getting what you need from the e-text. They're great resources. I encourage you to try them out and figure out what works for you. Again, if you want to do this manually, 
you can. I, I, I recommend doing something like an Excel. So let's take a look. Here's our 25 data sets. I can then find the sample mean. You gotta do average here in Excel, select those. That gives us our mean. As you see here, it's our same mean that we just found there in StatCrunch. You should get the same answers. And then you can calculate the difference. So this equals this minus your mean. And then what you do is put dollar signs here so that it doesn't change your cell. This is how you can do it manually and see the steps, but not actually use a calculator manually. And then you copy all that down. So that's your difference. And then you can square it equals this squared. This is going step by step. I'm trying to show you guys how to do this. Okay. Copy that down. Gives you the sum. This is kind of a roundabout way, but again, this is just to and then divide it by n minus one. So that's 24 and we're going to do the square root. So 363, let's see what our standard deviation over here was. 363.69, 363.6959. So again, I just took this and I just found that difference. That's the data value. That's that 619 minus the mean. Copied that all down. Then I came over here and I squared all those. You don't have to do these in multiple steps, but I'm just showing you the process if you wanted to do it manually, quote unquote, and see the steps. Once you square all those, you sum it up. That's the sum right there and divide by n minus one and then take that square root of the whole thing. So I hope this helps you guys if you're having a hard time um, finding the standard deviation or kind of knowing where to start with this first discussion or the first assignment. So there right there is how you find the mean, median, and standard deviation. Remember for that module one discussion, you need to find the middle 68% and you also need to talk about the skewness of your histogram. Anybody's having a hard time doing the histogram, remember, you come over here to graph, histogram, and go from there. It, it's very straightforward. Um, see here, you just collect this and then click compute and you get a histogram. So as you can see, StatCrunch is a very simple tool. I highly recommend it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know and I'm more than happy to help.